Hello, this is Steven Now we are back with another Batman 66 episode review. We are reviewing the second part in a Penguin episode, in another Penguin-centric episode, the episode called No, Not Yet He Ain't, which is the second part to the previous Penguins going straight. So let's find out where we left off our Cape Crusader and seeing where this fine-feathered Fink is up to now. So to recap, the Penguin has fooled most of Gotham society that he is going straight. Batman and Robin aren't buying it, and after attempting to prove that he still is crooked, which backfired, resulting in them being viewed as criminals by the Goth by Gotham. Um, tracking down the Penguin to an amusement park, well, pier, where he's holding an like a um amusement park type thing, they are captured and are tied behind a sort of shooting gallery with Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara firing the guns, not knowing Batman and Robin are behind it. And that's where we ended the last episode. We do the usual, uh, we do the usual opening credits, and then we pick up where we left off. Batman and Robin managed to get out of the death trap by using bullet, by having their, sh by managing to put their boots up, protecting them from getting shot, as the shoes they're wearing have a bulletproof insulation type thing. They managed to quickly get out, quickly escape, but not by but not before subduing one of the guards. The Penguin, of course, thought that he finally killed him, and to make it even better to his delight, that the police are responsible. Realising, of course, that is fully not the case, and find out they escaped, he realised has to battle another round. Batman, of course, and Robin make their way back to the Batcave, but Robin thinks they should have apprehended the Penguin, but Batman points some stuff out. The Penguin had done, first off, Penguin had legally rented that amusement park, and to them, they are the trespassers. Let alone, Penguin was not the one to actually fire the shot, the guns, as was actually Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara. Realising that, they have really nothing else to do. Another thing we also got to point out in the episode going... F now, another thing to happen in the episode is we are now back at Police Commissioner Gordon's office, where Sophia Star and the Penguin, the Penguin there, demanding that, you know, Batman be apprehended. Penguin, of course, pulling the strings and being the, quite the manipulator, ends up picking up the bat phone and calling Batman, who answers. Commissioner Gordon has no choice but to go along and say that Batman, turn yourself in, and Batman, of course, knowing the position Gordon's in, agrees to do so. Penguin, of course, manages to spin the story, saying that Batman and Robin are threatening to, you know, kill him, you know, harm him, and needs police protection. Gordon, being forced into it, along with Chief O'Hara, realised they have no choice but to, confine, you know, to follow the fine-feathered menace. But Batman has a trick up his sleeve and calls Police Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara in for something. Now, Penguin and his goons are at Gotham, are at the, um, Penguin's Protective Agency office, and prepared for Batman and Robin to, you know, appear. And here, Batman and Robin come there, fully snapped, don't care if they go up the prison, up to the river for life, they are going to kill Penguin right there and there. This scares him and orders his goons to attack, and the fight, and a bat fight breaks out. But it gets stopped when they hear police sirens, so Batman and Robin quickly run on foot, being chased by all of Gotham's police, only to be gunned down in the streets, or an alley to be precise, but still, the sight of it is pretty diabolical. And in the ensuing chaos, Penguin and his boys take the Batmobile for their own. Commissioner Gordon tells on the news that Batman and Robin have been, have been killed. And Iron Harriet and Alfred shed a tear at the fact. However, it's then revealed that the guns that were used in that shootout were actually blanks. And Batman and Robin are actually alive, but in hiding. Realising that their only trump card to play is to be in hiding, but to monitor the Penguin to see what he's about to do. Penguin has taken the Batmobile and called it the Birdmobile and continues to swoon Sophia Star until he eventually asks to marry her. When this happens, all of Sophia, Sophia Star's relatives, you know, send wedding gifts. And we fight, and after another trick by the Penguin, we then find out the whole plan. His intentions was to marry Sophia Star, take all the wedding gifts and basically all the money that was to go to the wedding. Which will, which will make him super rich, and he and his boys would later hightail it out of Gotham with all of this riches, not only leaving Sophia Star at the altar, but essentially having so much money and being one of the biggest bachelors, which is pretty diabolical and even sick, even by Penguin's part. 
not just stealing all that wealth, but leaving Sophia at the altar, who generally loves him. And of course, we had a scene where this played out with the so-called wedding reception with trick umbrellas, the stuff being stolen, and knocking out Chief O'Hara and Commissioner Gordon, but of course, Penguin plays it off that it was another criminal and not him. He and the boys later drive off in the Batmobile with all the, um, the wedding gifts, and they and whilst they do so, they are being chased by Batman and Robin on the Bat Cycle. So this episode introduces the Bat Cycle, though it is not the version that, you know, that would be in the movie. It's a rather different version, something I was taken aback by when I saw this episode. But of course, thanks to the gadgets that the Batmobile, uh, the Bat Bike has, they use it to, you know, play around on the Batmobile with an ejector seat launching out all the Penguin, Penguins, Goons, Eagle Eye, and Dove out of the Batmobile. And it's just playing little tricks on there. Just controlling the car, opening the doors. Penguin have no idea what's going on. And of course, resulting in the Batmobile coming, turning the other way. Batman and Robin stop on their Bat bike and deal with the rest of Penguin's goons, knocking them out. And the Batmobile stops right in front of them. And of course, the Penguin is shocked to find that they're still alive. And of course, this ends with a climactic fight with Batman taking down the Penguin and his goons once and for all. With all the wedding stuff returned, Sophia Star, even though has found out what the Penguin's up to, she still believes deep down that maybe does the Penguin generally still loves him. Still loves her, and he gen and she generally wants to settle down with him. Even after all this, she still loves the Penguin. But of course Commissioner Gordon sadly had to break had to break it, the truth that she doesn't care about him and show her by bringing in the Penguin and showing off all the things that he stole and telling him that has he no conscience, this woman is still intending to marry him, and then of course he says, Heavenly Icebergs, take me to prison. And the episode ends there, which says, tuning in next week for the return of the Riddler. Again, I really just like this episode, and, and Harriet and Alfred have little screen time here, but it's still just a nice moment. Batman and Robin here, I like how they have to pretend to play dead and essentially go underground. Now this ain't the first time they've had to done this, they did that in a previous Riddler episode of pretending to be dead, but it's still nice to have that bit back. I also like how, despite everything, Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara still have Batman's back, even going along with Batman's charade, even though if it, you know, ever got out, it would probably ruin their careers, but it didn't. I like how they still have his back nonetheless. And Batman and Robin are still great as ever. Burgess Meredith's Penguin is yet another reason why he's such a great villain on the show. He is such a scene stealer, and he's, and he's still great here. He's still great in this episode. I like his plan of, essentially, to take all those riches and leave a girl at the altar. I mean, it's, I will admit, it's something I don't picture Penguin doing, but for some reason it works, and it me makes him a little bit, you know, sick to do this, to take all those women's fortune and essentially leave her at the altar. It's, it's sick, even for Penguin. But Burgess Meredith plays it off as, you know, as him as a, again, a, an aristocratic gen gentleman thief who plans the most elegant of crimes. And that just fits in. And with him fitting into higher society, I guess this plan would fit that interpretation of the character. Sophia Star here is a really sad case. She really loves the Penguin, but when she finds out that what he wants, I'd like of what he really wants, basically to take all her fortune, she still believes deep down that, you know, that, she, that he and Penguin are truly meant to be together. But of course we know, Penguin only cares about one thing, himself. Not Yeti Ain't is just, is another good episode, another good Penguin episode, to be honest. There may be some flaws here and there, maybe, in this, in the first episode, but I can't really point out any flaws in this. I will admit, I do like how we don't know his full end game until the end, and it does make the character look a bit, you know, sickening that he would do this. I really like this how the, how the penguin is here, and it's a really fun episode. Not ten top ten worthy, but it's still a fun episode nonetheless. And the fact Batman and Robin getting gunned down in the streets, I even when I saw it, I was generally shocked that they were willing to go there. In sixty in the sixty six show, it is really it is a really out there moment, and there it is. Not yet he ain't, which another great penguin episode, and for me fixes and for me 
is makes this two-parter worthwhile is, while the first one may have some flaws, the second part, you don't really see any flaws, and you just like how they just went with it, with all over the place. It's a really good episode, and another great ep episode for the Penguin. Join us next time as we review another Batman 66 episode with Frank Gorshin once again back in those green tights to confound the Cape Crusader. So tune in for that, for that episode on the same Stephen Hour, same Stephen channel. So long for now.